You're such an asshole! Hello, children. Again, not Chef. That's Three Dog from Fallout 3. I think, Fallout 3. Not New Vegas, Fallout 3. Hi, Aaron. I'm a 36 year old high school graduate, full time job, 1070 an hour. Anyways, the American economy is going to shit in the future being uncertain for many people. I am studying how to live in a vehicle just in case I'm down on my luck. RVs are too big for me to drive and use too much gas, so it would have to be a van or a truck with a camper. I'd use gym for showers, cell phone for entertainment. I don't know if they have battery operated AC and heaters, but if they did, that would mean the world. I'm just trying to prepare for our worst, ca worst just in case. I think everyone should. What tips do you have on this? If you know anything about battery operated AC, please let me know. Thanks, Brian. Okay, Brian, so I did a little bit of research. Now, I know um, an individual who does do the van life, and there's a whole community of which you can go ahead and educate yourself on van life. They have people live out of their vans. It's legitimate. You can do it. I've actually been tempted just to try it, you know, like, ah, eh, let me see if I can go live in a van for like a year, and me and the G, if we hop in the back and, and five and a Kate and drive around. Um, but then the heating and the cooling issue of just general environment, uh, it's an issue. And it all depends, like, you know, if you're saying, oh, well, the world would go to pot. Well, would you even have gas to fuel your van? I mean, are you literally going to live out of your van? It's going to be stationary. Or is it like, yeah, you can still get gas, you get transport around, and the internet's still working. So it all depends on the environment and the scenario, like how bad of a scenario you're talking about. In the ideal case, it's bad, but it's not so bad that the electri uh, electricity isn't running, gas isn't being produced, and you don't have the internet. And the reason I say those things is because as long as you got gas, you can, for very cheap, move your homestead, your van, from favorable environment to favorable environment, which is cheaper than spending the heating and cooling costs. Like if you're just to stay in one place, you know, Minnesota, you got to heat it up, and then in summer, you got to cool it down. And in Phoenix, you really got to cool it down. And then winter, you're just kind of like, meh, let's golf. Um, but it's cheaper to just move your van back and forth with literally maybe $30 in gas, uh, maybe 40 or 50 at most, and you move to where the environment is. Um, but again, that's contingent on gas being ample or, or affordable. So here's what I what I did, and I, I kind of did a kind of a triage or a top down type of analysis, and I, I took I consulted my uh, buddy who does live in a van, uh, a little bit of my own intelligence and logic, and then some things I gleaned from the internet. All right, first thing, geography. If you're doing van life, if you're going to live in your van, the number one advantage you have is mobility. You can move your van to where it's warm. Uh, and I say warm as opposed to cold because heat, unless you're old, typically won't kill you. I mean, you you got to go to a really hot area uh, to be killed, uh, Death Valley or something like that. It's cold that's going to kill you. So you can move your truck kind of in the temperate area like Kansas City, Denver. If it gets too cold, okay, you drop down to Dallas. You go down to Phoenix in winter if you got enough gas. If it gets too hot, you can always go up to Montana. Um, but let's just take Denver for a particular example because this introduces another thing. So you have your geography, you just move to where the warm weather is. But take Denver and for example, a coastal town like San Diego or Seattle even. Um, and even I did this in, in Rapid City. The second variable is altitude. Okay. Uh, I remember being in South Dakota and I would, I would, our hotel was in Hot Springs. And it was more or less on the prairie borderline desert. A prairie desert kind of and it would get hot it get 100 degrees commonly and if it got too hot what we would do is we go to custer and then we go up into the mountains where it was easily 15 degrees cooler and that kind of i let the weather determine where i'd hike if it was a cooler day i'd go hike out in the desert in the badlands if it was a hotter day i'd go and hike up in the in the black hills in the mountains so Denver is kind of a perfect example where it's like, okay, it gets too hot, you go up into the mountains it gets too cold you go down out into the prairie slash semi-arid desert uh, the coastal town is a little bit different, but kind of the same principle where um, it gets too hot, I'm going to go on the coast where the breeze comes off the ocean. It gets too too cool, I'm going to go inland where it's a, a little bit warm. And Well, California and Seattle go straight up in the mountains, but you get the idea. So you're going to use geography and altitude to your advantages there. 
Um, then it becomes, all right, what do you do to your actual van to control your environment? And so here's, I, I took some notes here. The first thing I would do is a trickle charger standard transmission setup with a, an extension cord. And the reason I say that is because usually you can find an open extension cord. And if you have that, and I'll get to the standard transmission later, but a trickle charger and an extension cord will allow you to charge up your batteries on your car or your truck. The standard transmission, if all of a sudden uh, you've tapped your battery using it for heat or air conditioning, at least with the standard transmission you can push start it, but if you have an extension cord and a trickle charger, you can charge your battery up uh, from any kind of electrical outlet. So now this all of a sudden restriction starts to come in. You gotta be nearby a place like a, a rest stop that actually has an outlet that you plug into. Uh, you gotta go to a, a coffee shop or some place where there's an outlet that you can actually basically steal somebody's electricity from them to charge up your battery. Um, or if you have a standard transmission, you can always push start your vehicle. That I'm, I'm being perfectly honest, that's the number one reason why all my vehicles are standard transmission. It's because I don't want to ever be trapped with a bad battery or a bad uh, uh, alternator. Um, I had troubles with that shit in the past. I just don't want to be dealing. I mean, you can, you know, my motorcycles, more or less, every time I've been able to push start my vehicles and nurse the shit back to home where there is an electrical outlet or something like that. So with a trickle charger and an extension cord, you could pilfer off of somebody else's electricity. Uh, you could charge your battery on your car. And so you can also live off of the battery in your car. So you can plug in with it. They have like little AC or not AC, the... Um, like the cigar lighter plug-in, the cigarette lighter plug-in. You can plug in a heater or a cooler, a fan, basically. You don't want to use uh, uh, air conditioning. That's just going to sap. All you're going to do is get, like, air um, to blow on you and to cool you down. Uh, but you can find, like, little heaters. But it's going to it's gonna sap your battery on your vehicle. So you need a means by which to recharge your vehicle. So it's either push starting it or you get a trickle charger. Um, or, if you're lucky enough, you find an electrical outlet, remote someplace over on the wayside or whatever, you plug it in, you got yourself a nice little portable heater. Um, I, 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 I didn't see any portable air conditioners because they, they take up way too much energy. But you can find yourself a nice little heater um, for that as well. Um, now, the good thing, heat is more important than air conditioning. Again, you're not going to die of the heat. You will die. Uh, because of the cold, so you're going to want to keep yourself warm. You can ameliorate that problem by going south, but if you still need a heater, they got little portable heaters. You you want to go, because you're in a van, you don't need some big thing that's going to emit a ton of heat. You just need a little bit. And also, I would <clears throat> insulate the hell out of your van. So there's a lot of things that you can do to insulate yourself and insulate your van. So throw up some extra towels. You can get thermal sleeping bags. You can add old towels that's what i did to not only uh soundproof my my uh, recording studio and my shed uh but it also stays very very it heats up quick i was out there it was like i think five below one time and i plugged in the heater and it, it didn't take more than five minutes for me to be like oh my god i gotta turn this damn thing off so <clears throat> you can <clears throat> if you insulate your van quite well it's not going to take that much heat which is good because as long as you got like a low amp it doesn't suck that much energy or juice off of your car battery. You should be able to keep it uh, very warm and roasty toasty. You get a thermal sleeping bag, some thermal pajamas, and you're kind of set and golden. In other words, you want to use as, as least amount of electricity or energy as possible. Uh, just, you know, warm pajamas, insulate, warm thermal sleeping bags, you'll be all right. Uh, that being said, you... you you, you would say, okay, I'm still going to need an external source of energy somehow. So ex, uh, extension cord is one thing. Um, pilfering, or not pilfering, uh, but using the um, car battery and the alternator to charge up shit is another. Uh, but inevitably you would like to have some kind of third option where you're not draining the car battery or van battery and you can't commute or travel anymore. So here's why I'd recommend getting... Um, some kind of like portable battery that can be charged. Now they have them, and I, I jotted down some here. It's like uh, Gold Zero Yeti batteries. They have AC and USB. 
Um, if you find yourself a small little heater fan, it doesn't take up that many amps, you can plug it directly into that. <clears throat> I mean, if you have yourself a, a, uh, an extension cord you find free electricity, obviously just plug it directly into that. But if you're in the middle of nowhere, you don't, you know, okay, they have these portable battery, uh, batteries that you could charge up and then you could plug in AC or USB and it will provide you a significant amount of heat or electrical source. You may also want to consider getting solar panels. You can also find those online. Uh, where you, these they even come in battery pack solar panel combinations where the solar panel will charge the battery pack and the battery pack will provide you you know a certain amount of electricity which would be translated into heat um, but I, th that I, I'd had do kind of like all three okay I got my extension cord I got my trickle charger I got my uh, alternator battery in the car but then I also have solar panels and I have this extra battery pack and I keep all those motherfuckers charged as much as possible and anytime you can, like, you know, you take your battery pack and you just plug it into the coffee shop. You know, so for $2 worth of coffee, what are you going to get anyway? You plug it in. Or you go to the uh, the wayside and there's, like, the, you know, if you're talking about emergencies, they got the, the soda machine that's plugged in. Unplug their soda machine, plug in your fucking uh, battery, charge your battery up. And some of them, like, what was it, 500 watts? I mean, it, there's some serious here, here portable batteries. Goal zero of which you can buy through my Amazon affiliate program. Go to captaincapitalism.blogspot.com and click on the Amazon banner. Do all your Amazon affiliate so, uh, shopping uh, through there. The Yeti 400, 396 WH. Let us know, 300 watts, 600 watt surge, pure sine wave inverter. 120, 12 volt ports. Yeah, so like this is the thing that you go and you just charge and that should keep you heated for a night if you have a slow draining, you know, a, a heat fan that doesn't take that much or you don't need that much because vans aren't that big. Uh, let's go to... I just want to make sure I'm covering everything. I'd use sh gym for the showers. Yeah, maybe read Reconnaissance Man. That'd be a good thing because if... This, again, it depends on how far the economy collapses. I use a, a, a what is it, the gym I have a membership to. I forget the name of it right now. I'm sorry. But I have a, a membership where they have gyms all over the place. I just shower there when I'm on the road. I have washed out of more wayside sinks and more streams than I'd like to admit. Um, but the real trick there is that you stay south. You, look, you can fight summer. You can't fight winter. All right. Uh, so staying clean, that's not that hard if you're in the south or you're near the Rockies or in the southern part of the Rockies. There, there's always water around. Um, the real issue is staying warm at night. Cell phone for entertainment. That assumes the cell phones are working and the, the interwebs are working. I don't know, the heaters, and I'm just trying to prepare. Yeah, so I think, I think that'd be, you know, trickle charger, extension cord, separate battery pack, and then a solar panel of which you can go online. There's, there's more options than you would think. That is that is definitely a way to stay warm or if you need to, cool. But the the main benefit of van life, assuming you have a work location independent job, is that you just go wherever you want. Uh, you know, I kind of do the same thing with a motorcycle, which even has less protection than a van. It's just like, I'm going here because it's warm down there. I'm going back up north because it's getting too hot down here. Uh, but that all is contingent upon the internet still working because that's how I make my money and that's maybe how you make your money. But if it gets really bad, you're not going to have gas and you better have bullets and guns and you better find a, a fresh water source and then you better team up with a bunch of people who are better shots than you. That's that, Then you get into like post-apocalyptic uh, survival mode. So. All right, that's it. That's all we got. You guys got questions, go to assholeconsulting.com. Oh, and by the way, check out Van Life. Just search Van Life. There's, there's, dude, there's so many people. They'll, they'll give you more than and They'll probably make some comments down below. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's, there's a whole community out there, and it's kind of like I said. I've looked into it, and I'm kind of like, oh, maybe I could do Van Life. But then I'm like, eh, motorcycles are cooler. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys later. Toodles.